Hey guys, Joshua Peterson here with Peterson Electric. I want to show you our second video here of this service change. Um, one thing I want to point out is that you got to make sure that you're higher than 10 foot. We're at 12, which is great. Um, our customer is going to go ahead and cut off that branch because you're responsible as a homeowner to take care of that. That's the lowest part of the drip loop coming in. This is a lateral aerial conductor cable coming in for your service entrance. Um, it's attached to the wall up there. We changed this out to an IMC conduit, added an extra strut strap, 7-inch shallow strut up there, ran down some 2 watt. Um, and then in here, this is your bypass lever. Over to here, our main 150 amp disconnect. And then um, this is how it turned out for all of our feathering. We did all our grounding up here and our neutrals, putting in our arc faults. If you have a white, it's gonna be a GFCI breaker. This is gonna be an AFCI with a dark blue. With a baby blue, it's gonna be GFCI and arc faulted called a dual action breaker. Um, basically, in a nutshell, the other thing you wanna keep in mind is that when you go to set your torque specification, your breaker indicates, these are gonna be 40 foot pound, inch pounds, excuse me. These are gonna be 25 inch pounds on 15 and 20 amp single poles arc fault dual action or just your normal standard breaker uh, this is a little screwdriver that you can get that's a um, torque screwdriver comes with different heads this is going to be a square head and then right here uh, it'll tell you that we're doing 25 inch pounds when you get to that point you're here at click and beat okay when i did my normal screwdriver square head I ended up with almost two revelations, revolution turns more uh, counter or clockwise because of the head size and the amount of power you can get on these. But you do want to meet that specification because if this, if you miss this in here and it starts to arc, that breaker is going to trip on its own because it's not tight even from the first point of connection. As you send power, your voltage, your potential pressure going to the devices, coming back on the outside of that you're going to have that load and that resistance will then heat up the breaker or it will sense it and then it'll trip. And that's called a nuisance trip. So the other thing again, like we wanted to show you that if we raise the ground up with a platform, we've done that in the past with some treated wood, uh, putting some uh, either pea gravel in the bottom or rocks and then putting a little bit of uh, squeegee on top and then putting in some flagstone so it's not permanent but as you put this over here mind you you still have power or your uh, excuse me your telephone coming in here so if you put a cement pad and make it really high that's a pretty permanent situation but you could do a deck step and but it would have to be tiered to go higher so that's why we decided from this point we cut out and the wires coming up from the bottom got lowered almost 12 inches and then up here where these were coming in here we brought those up higher as you can see we cut all that in now you do have to feather all this this is going to meet article 200 under identification where you twist your grounded conductor your neutral your white and then your hot conductor your black or your red your ungrounded conductor to your breaker um, other than that i think it turned out pretty well here's your grounding for the system um, you do have to size this based off of 250 64 for your wire size if you're going your cold water and then 250 122 is going to be based upon your main breaker size but the code does state that you can do a number eight on your ground rods or a number six we do a number six because that's 150 amp we actually hit it all the way around we drove an eight foot ground rod there came across we have another ground rod right over here not closer than six foot so there's two ground rods you have to meet for 250.50 and 52 and then as you're traveling around Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't point out. Your inner system bonding bridge bar is right there. And that's that guy right here for your telephone. And your Comcast guys, dish, whoever, right there. That's 250.93, I believe. And then as you travel around, you still have to meet your cold water bond. Again, that's 250.52. That's sized off of your feeder size. And then over to here, we've got a, a bond on our gas. And you can't go on the line side of your gas, you're going to go on the load side. And right inside of that gas meter, right down there is where the cold water enters in. And it was unfinished. The rest of this was actually finished, so we didn't want to tear drywall on the ceiling. So we went ahead and bonded it, just and strapped it right here with some 3 MC one-hole straps. Kept it really tight. They can paint this if they would feel the need to, but we do have to have that ground and it's not an option. And just so you know, there is no such thing as grandfathering in, grandmothering in, great-grandma, great-grandfather, cousin, 
uh, or if you have any kind of aunt or whatever you name it, there's none of that in the code. Uh, most city jurisdictions say, hey, if you touch this, you're going to own the grounding. If you touch the um, in 406.4D, all your receptacles in the house because you're going to take care of that aluminum, well, guess what? If you're changing those receptacles out, the code states you have to arc fault now the circuit, whether it be at the plug or at the beginning of the circuit. But you got to keep in mind that in 210.12, it does state that if you're running brand new branch circuits and you're going to protect inside, you got an MC cable. So you're better off just to arc fault everything on the outside. So far, we've set a lot of these breakers today, and I haven't had any trip. The second step to this is we're going to trace out the house. We're going to label the dead front cover. Um, where are we at? A minute. Six. Okay. Um, once we label our dead front cover, we're then going to go and uh, put our number tags around our wire. And then we're going to make sure that all these are in the right position. So, for instance, in a kitchen, you're going to have a dual breaker for your dishwasher disposal because you can't put a GFCI where it's not accessible, but yet now you have to do that. So, anyways, guys, thanks for joining us, and um, hope you have a good day. Hopefully this helped you out. Bye.